Ah, oh, lovely. It's actually on a tree, trying to get a good view of the, the fish and the river there. Isn't that beautiful? Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan. Out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Today we're at the pretty village of King Somborne in Hampshire. It's on the A3057 between Stockbridge in the north and Romsey in the south. And today we're going to be doing a roughly three mile circular walk from the village. We'll be taking in some stunning views, going along an old Roman road, a disused railway line, and a few other interesting things along the way. So do join us. Now I'm filming, it's the last weekend in September, very autumnal, although the sun's out and I'm squinting in it, it is quite chilly, it's about 8 degrees and there's a bit of a, a wind as well coming from the north, so that's why we're well wrapped up today and Logan's got his little fleece on. Well I parked my car at the free car park at the village hall, which is just on the southern side of the main road that comes through the village. We'll start off by uh, having a look at a couple of things in uh, the village itself. We'll start off with the church that's right behind me here. And there it is, the uh, St Peter and St Paul Church. A 12th century building. It actually occupies the site of a previous church. The chancel and south aisle is 13th century and a, a fair bit was added in the, the 14th century and then it had major restoration and refurbishment in the 1880s. Looking at the magnificent tower there, I think it holds five bells and the oldest was dated in 1686. And so we can't uh, actually go inside the church because it's been locked. A few little interesting things that we can see on the outside. Just look here, look there's a a mass dial against this window and the um, days gone by before clocks I'd stick a well a stick in that hole there and then the uh, folk would know what time mass started and well you can just about make out another one on the other side but they've, they've filled the, the hole in there. Well we're not going to have too much time to have a look around the village but a couple of things to look at. We've got the Crown Inn over the road there, a 16th century coaching inn and then just in front of me here the War Memorial. That was unveiled in 1921 designed by Sir Edwin Lutyens who also designed the Cenotaph in London. Okay well, we're going to start heading out into the countryside now. So if you are coming to King Somborne well worth a little meander through the village. There's some lovely uh, houses, old cottages, thatched cottages, a lot of houses with their unique characteristics. A very pretty little village. We're just going to follow a little footpath that uh, comes out of the churchyard. We're immediately met with this little green area that's got a little bit of history attached to it. I don't know if you can see the sort of undulations and earthworks out here. Now this was the location of a, a palace once owned by John O'Gaunt who lived from 1340 to 1399. He was one of the most powerful men in England. Indeed he was the fourth son of Edward II and he inherited King Somborn through marriage and when he died the manor became a royal estate. So a medieval manor house was rebuilt here but the building was demolished in 1840 and the stone used to build uh, the school amongst other things which is just over to my right and there is a little information board here which tells you the whole story of the place. All right, what have we got here? Sit-ups with your arms crossed across your chest keeping your back straight raise your trunk to 45 degrees using your stomach muscles and keeping your knees bent. Um, okay, I think I'll give that a miss. 
<laughs> okay, so we're now going to uh, head across this field and make our way into the distance there. quite glorious autumnal morning. There aren't that many clouds in the sky, the sun's out, but there is that little bit of sharpness in the temperature. But I'm getting some terrific views along here. Let me turn the camera around slowly and uh, walking along the side of uh, some arable field that was uh, harvested some time ago. Loads of um, berries still in the hedgerows and quite a few blackberries which I dare say my hound will enjoy very shortly. Yeah, a few nice big black ones there. Want daddy to get one for you. Ooh. There you go. Any more in here? There's loads of them still. I always want the ones that you can't get. Oh, there's a nice one there. What about this one? Hey. <laughs> We're now as far south as we're going to go and now I'm going to start following an old Roman road that used to go from Winchester in the uh, east to Salisbury in the west but this is a great place just to come up and admire the view isn't that beautiful that's looking south and then just panning round hopefully the sun isn't in the screen there's a crop of turnips, I think, in front of me. Okay, so we're now going to cross over the A3057 and uh, continue following the Roman road westwards. Well, some more cracking views to look at. And this is now looking north. Hopefully you can hear me. There's quite a wind up here on the ridge. But isn't that, uh, isn't that wonderful? Now, looking across there, we can see the John O'Gaunt's Deer Park, which was an oblong area, about 400 acres. It shows on an Ordnance Survey map today. In fact, if you look on a detailed Ordnance Survey map, it shows as uh, Park Pale, which is a, uh, the boundary of the, the park. And uh, it's just on the other side of the field there, lined with yew trees, I believe. It was originally called Howe Park after William de Ow. There's still a Howe Park farm right there over on the, the, uh, the hill and uh, the origin was by a charter of 1200 allowing a chap called William Breawear, I think his name was, to chase hare and fox through the king's land and then somehow he got permission to enclose Howe Wood and this area into a park but um, it stopped being a, uh, a deer park in the 16th century. We're now coming into the uh, little hamlet of Horsebridge which is just over here to my uh, to my right. A tiny little place it grew up really where the Roman road crossed the river Test and the Normans revived the old road to provide access from a hunting lodge at Clarendon in the west to uh, the palace that existed at King Somborne and the deer park here. So we're going to continue heading down here, just going to come off the Roman road and uh, <laughs> well to the answer what did the Romans ever do for us? Well they made a very nice footpath thank you very much. And this is the uh, 
John O'Gaunt Inn, affectionately known locally as the Jog, originally called the Railway Inn, and I'll explain about that shortly. I think there was a major fire here in 2015 when a fair chunk of it was uh, was damaged quite badly. Oh, look at that! A lovely egret, and this is our first view of the River Test today. A chalk stream, 40 miles long, rises at Ash near Basingstoke and then flows into Southampton Water. Well, hopefully you can see that egret. So I haven't got the uh, the zoom on the GoPro today, but lovely in the in the sunshine. And look and how clear that water is. Ah, oh, lovely. It's actually on a tree trying to get a good view of the, the fish and the river there. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, highlight of the walk so far. Oh, you're away. <laughs> and there, <laughs> partially hidden by a lovely willow tree and some other trees, is the Horsebridge Mill. There was a mill mentioned here in the Doomsday Book. And this building is early 19th century with a late 20th century extension and I think you can just about see there the mill race under the left bay. Oh it's so beautiful with the sun reflecting off the uh, the water there. Well, we're now going to follow a little shaded path along the old disused railway line that was uh, used to be known as the Spratt and Winkle line. It was uh, a line that ran from Andover in the north down to Redbridge near Southampton in the south. It opened in 1865 but it closed in the, the 1960s. Now right by me here, if I turn the camera around slowly, we can see the remains of Horsebridge Station and that was opened as well in 1865 and it's probably the best preserved station building on the line but it's now a private property so we're not going to be able to see that much but uh, you'll notice there's a lovely 1922 third class southern railway coach acquired from British Rail there I believe it's been converted in accommodation you, and you can actually stay there and then right at the end of the platform there's a, a signal box rescued from a yard in Kent somewhere and that replaced the original I say you can't really see too much. Uh, I managed to take a few snaps by the camera over through some gaps and some hedges and that sort of thing. Anyway, we're now going to head along, I say, the uh, route of the old line. Ah, and here we have the old railway bridge just outside of the station with uh, a little tributary of the River Tess going underneath it. And I did find an old black and white photograph and it showed this uh, bridge and the station as it looked in its former glory. And as you can see it's um, there's two tracks side by side. Looks so there's bits of the old rail there as well. It's lovely that it's still here. Uh, we're just leaving Horsebridge and as you can see from the sign we're going to be following a bit of the Test Way and the Monarchs Way. Now the, um, the Monarchs Way is a long trail 625 miles or so and it represents the escape route of Charles II after the Battle of Worcester I believe. And he went from Worcester to Shoreham in West Sussex via Bristol and Yeovil I think as well. And the Test Way is a much shorter route, just over 40 miles, I believe, that um, well, effectively runs along the route of the River Test. Just crossing another little bridge that goes over part of the test. 
Well, looks like there's a dog access point down there. I think it's a little bit chilly today to ask Logan for a demonstration. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. I love the way they've done that. Use some old sleepers to make a, a bench to rest on. I think, that's a, I think that's a good place to have our half-time slug of water, Logan, yeah? Well, it really is quite glorious now. I probably didn't need all this clothing on. <laughs> now, um, I know quite a few people follow these uh, videos uh, and do the walks later. This is an important part of the routes because we've been following the line of the old disused railway. We're just about to leave it, come across the, some crossroads, and we're now going to join the Clarendon Way, which is uh, another old route. I think it's 26 miles or so from Clarendon Palace near Salisbury in the west to Winchester in the east. So we will be heading eastwards, which uh, I just let this runner go by. Yeah. We'll be heading up that little hill there. But before we do, um, I'm just going to head about 100 yards to the west here along a, a public footpath. There's one final look at the river test. And here we are. So it's, I think it's worth doing this little detour. Just over a bridge over the test. And there's uh, cattle enjoying a well-earned drink. It really is quite <laughs> enchanting here. And if I slowly pan round, I think it looks even more beautiful on this side. Isn't that quite exquisite? Now I can see... <laughs> and the same to you, madam. I can see a few fish there as well. Well, folks, another wow moment coming up. Some beautiful 360 degree views from up here. I've got Howe Park Farm to my right. So if I just pan round. So this is looking... Uh, uh, north, I think, yeah, must be looking where the sun is. And you really do get some terrific views across the, the countryside here. And uh, just panning round. King Somborne is just in the valley over there. And uh, as I say, quite a bit of blue sky still. And as far as the eye can see, quite glorious countryside. Okay, so we're on our homeward leg and we're gonna uh, join the footpath just over there, which as I say, will take us back into the village. Well, I'm making our way along uh, a narrow little path back to the, the village. Really noticeable how many uh, little fruits are still out and uh, so much of this. <laughs> Well, some people call it traveller's joy and other people call it old man's beard. But, uh, some sort of clematis, I believe. But it's uh, everywhere along the hedges along here. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up or like and do make a comment. And uh, please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. That way, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. We've had a super walk today, all sort of open countryside and woodland. There's been hardly any road work at all to speak of, which is great. And the weather's been lovely as well, and the sunshine with that little bit of sharpness of autumn as well. We're back off to uh, the Crown Inn in King Somborne for some light refreshment. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.